Welcome back, guys. It's Papa Panic. Ugh. Oh, God, that felt weird. Ugh. You should know that there's another episode of Overlord. And, um... Well, we've just been kind of shown the introduction of possibly an antagonist or a, a main driving force for conflict within the series. Um, being this... What well, looks to be some sort of general or leading some human troops and seeing that our lord and saviour isn't well he's undead isn't he so i'm guessing would be probably counted as a monster i'm quite interested to see how he would react in this situation considering that he has mentioned that he stopped feeling normal human emotions um and in the preview it was mentioned that he sees people killed and he doesn't care anymore. So, is he doing the killing or is he just watching it? But that's enough speculation. And we should just start the episode. I'm guessing that's <clears throat> some sort of village on fire and smoking in the background. So who was it that attacked the village? And I'm guessing these guys were just too late. So they're more of a scout force. So it's a plan of treachery to overthrow the king. One for many? Depends. I'm not sure he's going to see it that way. Then what they can be... They can be the ones to do it. So we're being shown that those guys are virtuous. And um, if you were to label them, they would be, either, you know, true, good, um, Are they going to get caught up between Lord Mwanga and there be a battle ensuing and, no, you know, the quote-unquote good and the no real allegiance other than to themselves? Is this kind of battle in the uh, intro that I'm looking for? But I'm glad the uh, pace is starting to pick up after the first two episodes were just kind of introducing us to it. Hmm. 
So he could use it before, but now he's still kind of practicing, isn't he? It's still funny, people with usernames like touch me, <laughs> and that's what they take as... Ah, slaughter. Seems a bit unfair, they're unarmed. Potentially not, no. But it's also testing out Testing out the world by watching what's going on. So this is before. This is the guy that created Sebus or Service. How corny. <laughs> Fair enough. So is he actually going to intervene? Take the necessary precautions. Is he going to reach them in time? Because... Uh, It's just a flesh wound. Well, she can't exactly escape if you're holding on her, holding on to her. Not the kind of, uh, help you want to see arrive ho oh. now that is a useful skill so you can just kill them like that So he's and he's calling out the uh, knights, soldiers, I guess, as being cowards as well. So he's testing out weaker and weaker magic to see what kind of defense he's coming up coming up against. and what it takes to overcome. Okay, you can create zombies. <laughs> no, you can create bad CG. <laughs> Ooh. 
Fair enough. Well, he ordered him to go kill them. Well, he knows that the NPCs have more... can, in, you know, understand orders better, so he's got to be more precise, doesn't he? Well, he came to assist them, really, didn't he? Yeah, you wouldn't really accept anything from a skeleton. Maybe it's the outward appearance of and the fact that he just killed two people right in front of them. What happened to the objections of the little girl? Healing medicine, fix the clothes as well. I guess making s semi allies in this world would be a benefit. Even if they are kind of just simple villagers. They changed their tune. Starting his uh, fame. That answers a question for me, at least. So in this new world, he's called himself th the name of the guild. Is the Death Knight only focusing on the soldiers? Because that's what he was commanded. He was cleaved in twain. And you gotta love that saying as well. Yeah, you're not really gonna get away. So he's the, like, commander dude. A true leader. Throw your men at the enemy so they can die first. Coward. Crush him. Ooh, that's interesting. I was hoping that he wouldn't be spared. Yeah, it's a bit late. You're, you're pretty much screwed. Are they going to assume it's going to go after the villagers and use them as a human shield? Oh, he didn't do much, did he?
He actually looked like he knew somewhat of what he was doing. Is that to hide his appearance of being a skeleton? Fair enough. He's call calling a direct direct threat and showing his superiority and making allegiances with this village at least is this when he's going to get attacked by the other guys He can't seem too nice because he does have a death knight. Ooh, clever. Because everyone knew it was a game in Yggdrasil. kind of sad after he convinced them that they you know he was nice and went through that effort but very very clever they were they were just simple villagers and are they going to be tricked by So this is a completely new world, not a game, as people have pointed out. Although it uses most of the rules, I guess, that were laid out in the game. For simple villagers, they know quite a lot about the goings of the world. Yeah. I mean, it would be a bit weird just to have your guys in full adorned gear attack a village. Fair enough. So people he can hire. That's what I'm hearing. A rough estimate is fine. But does he want to show that kind of power straight away? Hmm. It 
it's nice knowing that he has a wand of resurrection. That's not going to be play any part in the story at all, is it? Oh, that's also clever. Calling himself the name of the guild so that if anyone recognises that, they'll be like, hang on a second. You don't want to make enemies already when you know little of the world. As long as she understands his reasonings behind it. That way he can um, also convince her not to do anything stupid. Is it the ones that were coming to save the village? Or was it a returning force? It's the ones that came to help. They wanted to be the heroes but they were late. He saved us. He doesn't want to show any particular allegiances until he finds out what's going on. Oh, okay. There goes my understanding. Is it his guys? Oh! I think Overlord is one of the few ones where I'm like really getting into it by the end. I actually really want to binge watch these but I'm going to be good. But yes, diplomacy is a very big thing to Ainz. And gathering information is always a very good idea, especially when you're thrown into a situation that you don't really know much about. Now, you don't want to go in with the express intent of, I'm now here to take over. Because you'll have a big uprising against you quite early. And... You don't want to create any powerful allies, or allies in general, without knowing what side they fall under, and who their allegiances are with. Because as soon as you make an ally, you also inherit their enemies. The fact that he doesn't care about humanity or people dying could be an issue. Oh, so it was a trick.
you see, now... I, uh, fine. <laughs> yes. We didn't really see much Alberto do anything, did she? She just kind of, oh, I'm here. Oh, should I crush these humans? No, I have to be good. All right. We saw Ainz be a bit selective. Because he did come to kind of save the village, I guess, in order to gain information from it. But mostly it was also to test out his powers and what he can do in this world. Straight away, I'm here. Oh, look. I've just exploded your heart. It's like, okay. Make a strong entrance, why don't you? The way that they're portraying Ainz as a character in this world, basically being this, so far, it seems relatively unstoppable force, but he's still trying to figure out how to use all of this power that he's got, um, or if it's even effective uh, and can be transferred over from the game world. The tiny little backstory with touch me um was nice and I'm, I'm wondering I'm wondering if we're going to get little little story pieces like that for all of the at least main guild members the ones that were create, creating the, the guardians or um any particularly interesting pieces because I don't think we're really going to learn about each and every one of them or if any of them are even in this world, or if it's not them, per se, they're persona characters, if they're in this world. Also, the fact that he decided against resurrecting the dead villagers, partly because he doesn't really care, but also because it would be more hassle to him if he started showing that he has this kind of power, because people would actively seek him out um, in order to use it for their own advantage. I'd like to know the extent at which that power can be used. Is it restricted to like you can only re resurrect a few like people within a certain amount of time or can you just wave it across a battlefield and the entire army stands up? Knowing I'm just going to call him Ainz from now on Knowing Ainz from at this point is probably the entire battlefield can just stand up, but would probably need to recharge his staff. It was nice seeing Alberto's battle gear though. She looked kind of. Well, she looked effective in that armour. And I like how her horns even had its own separate section in the helmet. I can see Overlord as being one of these shows which. I'm really going to enjoy. I've said it before, and the brutality, I guess, of the scenes is kind of on par with Yuzhou Senki, whereas we understand what's going on. People are dying and, you know, getting decapitated, being, uh, <laughs> getting your entire body just split down the middle. Yeah, they're gruesome i guess but it's done in a fairly tasteful fashion it's not too gratuitous and not because i don't want to see any like true uh gruesome detail it's more that it would just detract from the scene and uh the fact that it's just like yeah this is happening and that disconnect from it the same as with yujo senki it's people are dying people will die Everyone in this place is probably going to die at some point. That's just a way of it. It's not glorifying it. It's not detracting from it. It's just kind of there as a fact of life. And I'm pretty sure I'm overthinking that, but that's what I'm getting from it now. Uh, especially since his disconnect from it as well, where he's just... Yeah, you're dead now. Maybe I should feel something for it, but I don't. And it's that 
it's that connection there that, she, at least in my mind, is uh, purposeful. As always, if I'm wrong, let me know. I'm going to be wrong, so let me know. But if you've enjoyed the episode, then also down below, leave a comment and like the video. All the usual that everyone basically says all the time. So, until the next episode, stay awesome and join me again.